All right, this is third grade, module five, lesson 22, and students are going to start to generate some simple equivalent fractions using um, that visual fractions um, model on the number line. So the idea is, yeah, students are going to eventually start getting to that uh, classic algorithm of, oh, let's say we're talking about three-sixths, and that's equal to six twelfths, and that the students are going to start recognizing, oh, both of those numbers are doubled, and they're going to start getting there in this lesson. Although it's not going to be very formal and algorithmic, it's going to be very um, oh informal, let's call it, but we do want, during this lesson, for students to start recognizing this relationship between the numerator the numerators and the numer and the denominators. All right, so let's get going on that. So what I've done is I've made uh, pre-made a, a a number line here, and I've labeled the top ones fourths. So you've got zero fourths, one fourth, two, three, four fourths. So we go from zero all the way to one. And these big jumps, these uh, black interval lines here, are quarters or fourths. All right, and then down here, we took each quarter and cut it in half. So we made smaller intervals, and these are eighths. Once we took the quarters and cut them in half, we made them eighths. And so we should be able to see some equivalent fractions here. And let's, let's start with this one right here. So here's three-fourths. And so we can see that three-fourths is equivalent to six eighths. And we can see it because three-fourths and six-eighths live at the same location on the number line. Now what we want students to start recognizing and looking for this pattern, so teachers, parents, I don't know, turn it into a game where whenever a student sees a relationship between these two, uh, two equivalent fractions, uh, let them raise their hand and say, woohoo, I see a relationship. Um, in this case, we see that both 3 and 4 are doubled, and that gives us 6 eighths. All right, so that's one relationship that we want them to see. Oh, can we do another one? Uh, sure, we can see another one. In fact, here, here's one, 4 fourths and 8 eighths. We can see that 4 fourths is equivalent to 8 eighths, and that there's a relationship that 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 2 is 8. Now teachers, some of these students are going to try and think of an additive relationship. They're going to be thinking of 4 plus 4 is 8, and 4 plus 4 is um, 8. And then over here, they're going to think, well, 3 plus 3 is 6, and 4 plus 4 is 8. Uh, teachers, your task is to try and gear them or guide them towards that multiplicative nature of equivalent fractions rather than the additive portion. Um, technically, additive kind of turns these guys into more like ratios, but that's middle school and that gets all fuzzy and foggy and gray area. So please, just guide your students towards that multiplicative relationship between your equivalent fractions. Same thing, only now we've got sixths. Uh, another, we can see a relationship in equivalence right here. We can see that one-third is equivalent to two-sixths. And we can see that their relationship is both numbers are multiplied by 2. Both the numerator and the denominator are multiplied by 2, and that gives us 2 sixths. And, oh, do we see another one? Sure. We see 2 thirds right here is equivalent to 4 sixths. And so we can see that 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, and there is our relationship. So let's do some actual examples here. And so let's start by identifying the, the, the fractions for each of these figures. So right up here, we can see that that is 1 half. And then right here, we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces and 4 fifths 
are shaded in. And then right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five pieces, but now we only have two fifths are shaded in. Uh, right here, we've got six pieces, and three of them are shaded in, so that would be three sixths. And then, let's see, right here, oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five. So that's five times two is ten. So we can see that eight tenths are shaded in. And over here, one, two, three, four, five, and then five down here, so that's ten. And we can see that four out of the ten are shaded in. And then down here, we can see one, two, three, four, so that's eight, because you got two columns of four. And two out of eight are shaded in, two eighths. And lastly, we could see one-fourth. And so now, ideally, students are going to be looking for relationships. And we can see, oh, like right here, these guys are related. Because we can see that 1 times 3 and 2 times 3 gives us 3 sixths. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Now, the other thing is we want students to be able to see that this makes sense because if I were to move this guy right here and move this guy right here, we would get a completely shaded inside right here. And so that answer makes sense. Let's see. Can we find some more relationships? Well, here. Here's one. Two-fifths and four-tenths. Two-fifths and four-tenths. 2 times 2 and 5 times 2. 2 times 2 gives us 4. 5 times 2 gives us 10. And sure enough, if I look at this figure, hmm, I've got two tall bars here. Here, if I just kind of move them over a little bit, I just kind of move that one over and I move that one over, I get exactly two tall bars right here. Two tall bars, and that's exactly what we want right here. Hmm, let's see. Well, we've got four-fifths and eight-tenths. Because if I do four times two and five times two, four times two is eight, five times two is ten. And sure enough, there's my relationship. And I can see that I've got one unshaded bar or row and right here, if I kind of rearrange these pieces a little bit, I would get one unshaded row. So that means we know that those two are equivalent. And by a process of elimination, we see that these guys are connected. They're, they're equivalent ratio or equivalent fractions because one times two gives us two, and four times two gives us eight. And sure enough, we can see that these pictures kind of make sense. If I take this guy and I move him down to here, I get a full bar, just like over here. So teachers, this is where you're going to practice more of this, this idea of this being an 8. And we're also going to look for the, race, the relationship. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Same thing here. Well, let's see, 5 times 2 is 10, so that means we know 3 times 2 is going to be 6. And sure enough, if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 6 out of 10 is shaded in. And the last example right here, 3 times 2 is 6, 9 times 2 is 18, and we could, if we wanted to, we could count this to verify that we actually have 6 out of 18 that are shaded in. And the last slide for this video, how many ninths does it take to make the same amount as one-third? Explain your answer in words and pictures. Well, we're going to draw a number line. And since the big question is to make the same amount as one-third. Let's draw 
a number line from 0 to 1 and cut it up into thirds. So here's 0 thirds, 1 third, 2 thirds, and 3 thirds. And how do we turn this into ninths? We turn it into ninths by cutting each third into 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. So this becomes 0 ninths, 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 3 ninths. And that's the answer to our question right there. How many ninths does it take to equal 1 third? Well, there's 1 third, and there's 1 ninth. So the answer is 3 ninths. We could write this out. 1 third is equal to how many ninths? And we can see that 3 times 3 is 9, so 1 times 3 is 3. So we know that we're right by using a picture, and we know, we're right, we know we are right because we can see this relationship over here. And that wraps up Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 22, where students are generating simple equivalent fractions using that number line as our main guide. And we're informally starting to see that, oh, you can have two equivalent fractions. And if they're equivalent, it means you're going to see some sort of multiplicative relationship between those two equivalent fractions.